What's up guys? This is my second video on Andy Anderson's third board. If you haven't seen the first video, watch this video first and then go check that one out because I've got more details about the board in that video. So in the last video I had 8.75 Indy trucks on the board and the trucks were significantly larger than the board because the board is 8.4. So right now I've got Thunder 148 trucks, which are 825. And then we've got Andy Anderson's wheel. This is the Nano Cubic 52 millimeter. And this wheel sticks out past the axle and the bolt. So it actually protects the axle and the bolt from getting hurt. And it allows you to stand primo on the board. So in today's video, we'll actually be able to do some primo tricks. Part of the reason Andy Anderson designs his own specific board is because he likes skating freestyle, he likes skating bowls, he likes skating street, and it has this primo nose and tail. So here you can kind of flip in and flip out of tricks while you're standing in primo, and he specifically designs the boards this way. Also, Thunder trucks feel a little more tech for me. They're lighter. These are smaller than the trucks I had in the last video. And they kind of lengthen the wheelbase a little bit. I think it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to do flip tricks. Now these wheels are kind of big and chunky, so that might hinder me a little bit, but I do think it's going to be easier to flip the board. I realize I got some air bubbles, but my main gripe in the last video was that the board was too steep and the wheelbase felt too short for me, which all of those things would be fixed if I just skated his first board. But I wanted to try out the newest, latest and greatest. Andy Anderson board. So I just stepped on the board and did a few kickflips and realized this board feels so much better with Thunder trucks. That's why I need both. I need Indies and Thunders. So I found this shoe with the insole glued in that I had to glue back together in the back of my car. I, I forgot I had this shoe. So I guess I don't have to wear the barefoot running shoes. Let's see if this helps. It's actually not that bad with Thunders. It's not that steep. The reason you'd want a steeper nose and steeper tail is so they don't sog out and get, you know, too flexy or break. It's gonna make it stronger and it's gonna make it last longer. Cause if you have a really mellow tail, it's going to get too mellow eventually. And it's also gonna break a lot faster. So yeah, it's a strong board. I feel comfortable alling onto stuff. And I'm getting used to it. It's getting better and better. Look, I know you guys have been complaining about the air bubbles on the script tape. No, this is not mob. Um, I know it, the board looks like it has a disease. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's starting to bother me too. I'm not actually going to be going to a larger skate park today, maybe tomorrow, uh, because I'm just too tired. I don't feel like it. So, so far the 360 flips are much better with Thunders, which is the opposite of the last board I skated. But that just goes to show that some boards are better with Thunders and some boards are better with Indies. So yeah, I was having a lot of problems with my 360 flips with Indies yesterday, but today they're whipping around perfect. Maybe I'm just getting used to the board. I don't know, let's pop these air bubbles. Every time I buy a new pair of Indies, I have the desire to sell all my Thunders. I've made videos about this before, but I can't do it because certain boards work with Indies and certain boards work with Thunders. So this board has a short wheelbase, it has steep kicks. So for that kind of board, I have to go with Thunders. If it has a longer wheelbase, Indies shorten the wheelbase. Indies are taller. If it's a flatter board, I want taller trucks so that the pop distance or the, the distance I have to push the tail down in order for it to pop is more similar to what I'm used to because it's hard to get used to a completely different shape. So if thunders are lower and they move your wheelbase out a little bit, then this distance right here pops quicker. With indies, if they make the wheelbase a little shorter and they're higher, that causes this pop to be a little bit slower. And so I get a ghost pop if the board's really steep with indies. So as this board starts to wear down, it starts to look more like a regular board on the tail. I would probably avoid saying that this board is made for pressure flips because this pocket is hard to do pressure flips off of. I mean, this might be the hardest board for pressure flips I've ever had because it is steep. I think to make a board easier for pressure flips, you make it flatter, even completely flat, like a mode freestyle deck or something like that. That's probably the easiest board for pressure flips. Yeah, it starts to turn into a normal deck. Whenever somebody says, hey, do a front foot impossible at the skate park, I say, hey, I'm not Andy Anderson. And you guys aren't either. So, you know, this was designed for somebody who is very skilled on a skateboard and who's very lightweight. 
So yeah, he could do a pressure flip on it. The thing is, it, it causes me to pop everything high. So when I do a pressure flip, I have to pop it super high. So I feel like some of those pros on Battle of Barracks trying to do a pressure flip when they're used to popping all their tricks really high. Uh, that's what it feels like. It is definitely designed to make me skate more like a contest skater. That's what I feel like I'm skating and popping everything more if I actually skate the way it's intended to skate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, scroll through my channel, check out my other videos, and hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that was sick. Eesh. Sick. <laughs>